substitution. Alana Kennedy will be coming on, the number 14. Replacing Lisa Allway and Kaya Simon, as advertised, coming on as well. And it'll be Katie Gill making way for her. Control it. Australia not done for the year either. They've got a pair of matches coming up next month against China as they begin their preparations for the Asian Cup, the World Cup qualifiers in Vietnam in the spring. They uh, play it down here in the middle of the park for Australia. It appears to be in a bit of pain as well. Trainer, go ahead. Trainers immediately coming out. Obviously, very concerning to see. She's just coming into the game, trying to put pressure on Morgan. And the foot just planted the wrong way. ACL injuries are shown to be the highest reoccurring injury in women's athletics, especially in women's soccer. Women are shown to be four to eight times more likely to have an ACL tear in their soccer career. Data has proven that ACL tears account for 65.3% of total common injuries in women's athletics and also take the longest recovery time, six to eight months, until full contact play can resume. During puberty, girls experience an increase in height and weight from muscle mass and strength. This is a result of testosterone levels increasing during puberty. This change makes it difficult for girls to control their new bodies during athletic maneuvers. Women also have less neuromuscular control of the knee during physical activity. This means that they have more difficulty trying to control the nerves and the muscles in the knee. Typically, women are more quadricep dominant, which means that there is more stress on the ACL during jump landings and athletic activities. More pressure on the ACL can cause more risk of tearing because the ACL has to be stronger to hold up to the pressure that it undergoes because of quadricep dominance. Females' muscle activity tends to be the opposite of males. The hamstring muscles are very important in helping the ACL prevent the tibia from moving too far forward. Male athletes activated the hamstrings sooner and more often than female athletes. This predisposes the females to ACL injury. Females exhibited a muscular imbalance between the hamstrings and quadriceps. The hamstrings were significantly weaker than the quadriceps, relatively speaking. Once again, this can make the female athlete more prone to injury. Women have a larger Q angle than men do because their pelvises are wider than men's are. The Q angle is where the femur meets the tibia, at an angle. The greater Q angle puts more strain on the ACL and puts more force on the ligament with twisting or cutting. The greater Q angle added to the twisting or cutting motion puts women automatically at a greater risk of injury than men. Women have more body fat and less muscle due to increased estrogen. Women have increased strain on their knees because of the way their bodies are built. This results in a problem in tracking of the kneecap, which can cause pain and also may lead to tears in the ACL or the meniscus. Even though it has been proven that women are more susceptible to certain injuries than men are, there are ways to decrease their risk of injury and prevent future injuries from occurring. Injury prevention programs have been shown to help females stay on the field and out of the training room. It's important to include exercises that target muscles, the core, jump landings, and cutting drills. This will help increase muscular endurance, which will aid in players having less muscle fatigue and in return keep the muscles strong and at less risk of injury. Building up the core muscles will decrease risk of injury because it will increase stability, which will allow athletes to stay on their feet and reduce the risk of knee injuries. Practicing jump landings with anticipated and unanticipated landing will help the fast twitch muscles in their ability to land correctly and will decrease the risk of an ACL tear.
It is also important to work on agility training in an injury prevention program. Exercises such as forward runs with a three-step deceleration, lateral diagonal runs, and bounding runs will also aid in ACL prevention. Prevention programs such as the PEP program aim to teach female athletes how to land and turn properly and build appropriate muscle strength to control forces at the knee. Players perform the exercises for 10 to 15 minutes as part of their warm-up several times per week. Studies have shown tremendous success in decreasing the rates of ACL tears. The first study of the PEP program implemented in the Coast Soccer League in Southern California showed an 88% decrease in the first year of the program and 74 decrease in the second for athletes who performed the PEP program compared to players who didn't. From all the evidence I have researched and analyzed, I've come to the conclusion that women are susceptible to certain injuries, and they're more susceptible to certain injuries than men are. ACL injuries are the greatest known common injuries in all female athletics. These injuries continue to occur in women's athletics, and women continue to get discouraged as a result. However, having an injury prevention program can significantly reduce the risk of injury and can decrease the amount of injuries within a female athlete's career.